In this video, we're going to take a look at um, the P's build method. Uh, this has actually been around quite a long time. Um, Buckminster's Fuller's house in Carbondale um, was built using this method. So it's quite an old method and it's very similar to the bevel frame method. Um, so what I'll do in this video, I'll, show, I'll compare it with the bevel frame so you can see the difference because from a picture like this, um, it looks pretty much exactly the same as the bevel frame, but it's not quite the same. Uh, we'll look at the uh, at the differences here now. Right, we have um, a couple of cross sections here. Uh, we know with the bevel frame method, uh, I'll link to the video I did on that one uh, uh, below, uh, that you cut um, down one long side um, to produce the bevel angle two bevel angles e equals uh, a dihedral angle with the um, P's method you take a plank it's, you take a, a, a more flat uh, it could be five five by one four by one uh, something like that and you cut the top and the bottom uh, with the same uh, bevel angle. So it's, this, it's the same bevel angle here, but instead of cutting down one side, you cut top and bottom. Let me just get rid of that. Let's take a look at. Uh, I hope this is a two panels joined together. Um, on the bevel frame. These two lines are angled, uh, but the space in between the frame is at right angles. On the P's method, these two lines are parallel, uh, and the angle is between um, the uh, inside of the panel. So from each strut to the panel face is uh, angled on this one, and it's at right angles on this one. Uh, what that means is, um, if you want to put insulation in, uh, the P's method, um, you've got some angled pieces of wood, whereas it's very straightforward in the bevel frame method. Let's have, have a look at the insulation going in. Uh, with the P's method, you're going to get these voids if you use a stiff insulation. You'd probably be okay with something like um, glass wool, uh, something like that <clears throat> or rock wool but you have to be a little bit careful with glass wool and rock wool uh, that they don't sag uh, but a, a hard based insulation doesn't fit as well into P's method uh, as, it, as it does the bevel frame method right uh, the perceived benefit of the P system is that because it's a plank um, you can get planks in a, in, a, in a real wide variety of um, sizes. With the bevel frame, uh, you have to keep with square timber. If you went to a nine by one, for example, it wouldn't work because you'd run out, that angle would cut into the bottom eventually. With the P's method, you can use any width of plank you want. And the idea behind this is that you can um, put in thicker insulation and you get a deeper frame. In practice, it's not that uh, not that much of an advantage. Um, if we take a closer look at the a, a short um, piece type construction, if we get the angles out on our triangles by one degree, uh, you'll end up with a gap of 2.8 millimeters, uh, and that's on a 150 millimeter. So we're looking at a three inch here, and maybe. Um, quarter of an inch less than that it's a very small gap and if you put a um, a pair of grips on that you could probably pull that in uh, and, and nip it up if you double that to a 300 mil section uh, which is six inch uh, you end up with a five or nearly a five and a half millimeter gap which is quite a gap I'll just look on my tape measure here um, yeah, it's getting getting on for quarter of an inch. Um, 
and because of the, the, the length of this it's much more difficult uh, to pull this in with some clamps or anything without splitting or ripping something apart. So you've got to be a little bit care careful with your tolerances if you're going to make, make a deep frame uh, and the P's method it's probably only it's probably only better than the bevel frame if you want to make a really deep frame. Uh, I myself probably wouldn't um, because I don't like that that kind of tolerances. Uh, it's it's not really practical in a, in a DIY workshop to be able to um, uh, machine to less than you know much less than one degree, uh, especially if it's over sort of uh, a long distance like. Um, six inches or something like that it's really difficult whereas if you're using short uh, two inch 50 millimeter timbers a one degree difference really doesn't make much difference uh, you know doesn't make much difference at all another point to think about is uh, in manufacturing um, when I build the bevel frame domes uh, we use a jig uh, made from a pattern uh, and we start off with a piece of plywood which is the same uh, exactly the same measurements as a triangle so it looks like a triangle and then we uh, place the bevel frame on it and we we drop a block of wood in here uh, then, when, then when we take the frame off because we make the frame without the um, cover first uh, we can put drop the next frame on and, and build the next one exactly the same. With the uh, P's method it's a little bit more difficult. In in fact uh, because we have this right angle at the back on a bevel frame uh, all the angles on the saw are just straight angles there's no compound angles but because we've got this lean angle on the P's method uh, you have to do a compound angle uh, now, if you're making a jig, uh, you would need to um, make a jig with an angle on it uh, fixed. We would make that a wee bit bigger, to be honest. Like that. Uh, so you would have a jig like that. Um, but if this uh, section of timber moved a little bit, as it moves up, it's moving in, so you, you would you could potentially get um, your frames to be a different size. If it moved up up a little bit, it would move in. But on the bevel frame, if this leg moves up, a warp, a twist, or any anything, it's not set down on the on the jig properly. It doesn't change the dimensions because it's straight up in the air, so it won't change at all. Whereas this one, it can change, uh, and effectively you are cutting um, compound miters uh, and I hate compound, uh, compound miters um, with a passion because you have to do them left and right and they're a pain so uh, I think that the bevel frame is a simpler method um, but I, I don't think the uh, P's method is a bad one I wouldn't use it because it doesn't really give me any advantages over the bevel frame um, and it's a little bit more uh, complicated to make uh, but it still looks nice and you, you don't it still has the advantage of uh, you don't get voids at the hubs it's a hubless system so you get all the advantages you do with, with the bevel uh, frame system but I think it's a little bit more complicated uh, and a little bit more um, fiddly and because the, you can't get your insulation in um, and you don't have that square edge I mean if you're wanting to uh, double glaze for example the uh, appeasement uh, dome there's an this angle runs in so you have to uh, either have a void in in this bit here you know how I hate voids um, but with the uh, bevel frame method uh, you can put a double frame you just drop it straight in uh, put it put a um, fill it at the back and you're done so that's about it for um, this one. I thought I'd mention it because it is well known and not many people know um, the difference. So if from if you look at the um, initially, you couldn't really tell if this was a P's method or a bevel frame. It's really difficult to tell uh, until you do you look at the cross section uh, and. That P's method is 
these lines are straight and on a bevel frame you would have this one at, at a right angle down here uh, it's a, a, a just a slightly different way um, of building uh, and I thought I'd uh, to complete the series uh, put that in as well thanks for watching like and subscribe to see more videos uh, about different ways to build domes um, I'll put a link in the uh, description uh, to all the other um, build methods that I've uploaded uh, and there'll be a, a few more coming yet.